stranger came to Sigourney one quiet summer night in 1856, clad in a frontiersman garb and traveling under a fake name. Jim Lane, an abolitionist militia leader from Kansas, was staying at a hotel in Sigourney. The stranger asked to speak with Lane. Lane came to the door and the man introduced himself as John Brown, famed abolitionist freedom fighter. The two men spoke throughout the night, Brown giving fiery speeches about the blistering curse of slavery. The two men were gone by morning, leaving Sigourney for the battlefields of Kansas, taking 75 men and a cannon with them as they left. John Brown was a violent, militant abolitionist. A devout Christian, Brown believed his purpose was to be an instrument of God and strike down slavery. He helped transform Springfield, Massachusetts into a major stop on the Underground Railroad, befriending Frederick Douglass in the process. After the passing of the Fugitive Slave Act, Brown formed the League of Gileadites, a militia that ensured no freed slave was recaptured in Springfield. The 1850s were a bloody time in the Kansas Territory. Proposals to add Nebraska and Kansas as states scared southern slave owners, as Nebraska would add one more anti-slavery state and Kansas would possibly add a second. Whether Kansas would have slavery was left up to the people of Kansas. Eager to hold on to political power, pro-slavery forces fought to take control of Kansas. Thousands of ruffians from Missouri traveled to Kansas to sabotage the vote through fraud, violence, and intimidation. Abolitionists from the North responded in kind, led by John Brown. Calling themselves free soilers, they fought with the pro-slavery forces over the fate of Kansas. Kansas was split in half, with two different governments and constitutions. An abolitionist one in the city of Lawrence, and a pro-slavery one in Lecompton, supported by President Pierce. In May 1856, Lawrence was ransacked by white supremacist Sheriff Samuel Jones. Only one person was killed, one of Jones's men, but several homes were destroyed, as were the offices of two abolitionist newspapers. Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts criticized slavery in Kansas and was promptly beaten to the brink of death on the Senate floor by a representative from South Carolina. Angered over these events, John Brown was driven to violence. A few days after the sacking of Lawrence, Brown and his sons murdered five pro-slavery settlers with broadswords. The brutal attack was carried out in the dead of night. One of the victim's sons, a 16-year-old boy, was spared after his mother begged for his life. This massacre was the spark that set off a powder keg, leading to 29 more deaths over the following three months. After Brown and Lane returned from Sigourney, Brown fought off an attack from Missouri ruffians in the town of Osawatomi. Outnumbered, Brown was forced to retreat. His son Frederick died in the battle, and Osawatomi was looted and burned. John Brown left Kansas and began work for his greatest stand, leading a slave uprising in Virginia. The plan was to raid an armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia, then use the guns to begin freeing slave plantations, enlisting freedmen into an army that would eventually take the entire state. Brown asked his friend Frederick Douglass to come along. Douglass refused, deeming it a suicide mission. History would prove him correct. Although Brown and the 21 men following him successfully took control of the armory, they were crushed by a company of Marines commanded by Colonel Robert E. Lee. Ten of Brown's men, including Brown's sons Watson and Oliver, were killed in battle. Another seven, including John, were captured and hung. His last words, before he was executed on December 2nd, 1859, were I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away but with blood. I had, as I now think, vainly flattered myself that without very much bloodshed, it might be done. John Brown failed. His delusions of grandeur fell short when faced with cruel reality. But in his death, he served as a martyr. Abolitionists raised him up as a hero. Fears over men like Brown led to the formation of Southern militias and ultimately, the American Civil War. Kansas was admitted into the Union in 1861 as a free state. Jim Lane became a senator and served as a general in the Civil War. And, six years after John Brown's death, slavery was fully outlawed throughout the United States.